Hello, this is Domenico Composto with Easynomics, and we're going to go over a microeconomic concept. We'll be taking a look at graphing an example of a non-price determinant. In this case, we'll be graphing and analyzing uh, substitutes. So in class, you've been learning about non-price determinants of demand which are variables other than price that impact the demand curve to either shift it outward or inward. And there are several, um, income, tastes and preferences, future price expectations, the number of consumers or the size of the market, and the price of related goods. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today, the price of related goods. And specifically today, we're gonna be looking at an example of that, which is substitutes substitute goods so to illustrate this let's just use a very simple real world example of the market for coke and the market for pepsi so we're going to have graph a graph a will represent the market for coca-cola or coke for short and graph b will illustrate the market for Pepsi. Okay, and you can apply this example on a paper one and with the new economics guide, paper two and paper three, um, to illustrate this, this concept. We'll be measuring quantity, which is our dependent variable on the x-axis and price the independent variable in economics we measure the independent variable on the y-axis price on the y-axis and we're going to have a downward sloping demand curve for coke and we'll also have a downward sloping uh, demand curve for pepsi and we'll label this the d1 let's focus first on coke so coke is going to have a particular price set at P1, and we're going to assume that Coke is the market leader. And as the market leader, they will establish the price and Pepsi will follow that price. So here we have a price set by Coke at P1, and at P1 the quantity of demand is at Q1. So let's label that particular point A along the demand curve. We're going to assume that Pepsi is going to match that price. They're going to follow the market leader and also set a price similar to that of Coke. So we'll have price set here with quantity demanded here for Pepsi. And we're going to label those points. And I'm going to label this, um, let's say P3. This will help us in our analysis. And we'll label this Q3 and you'll see why in a moment. And here's Q1 and P1. All right, so we have D1, and this will be D2. Yes. And we'll label this point C, and we'll see why in just a moment. So Coke has established price at P1 with a quantity of demand at Q1. And what would happen with Coke raising price? Okay, so we're going to make a note of Coke, Coke raising price. Price is going to go up. And we want to know what's going to happen to the demand, the demand for Pepsi. So Coke decides to raise price from P1 up to, let's say, P2. According to the law of demand, the quantity demanded will decrease from Q1 to Q2. So that is a movement along the demand curve from A to point B. Okay, so any movement along the demand curve is a result of a change in price impacting the quantity of demand. So if Coke raises price, what will Pepsi to do? Pepsi will maintain price at P3. They will become the cheaper substitute. And as a result of becoming the cheaper substitute, they will acquire the lost quantity of demand for Coke. 
So this decrease in the quantity demand will lead to these consumers switching over to Pepsi since it is the cheaper substitute. And that will lead to an increase in demand from D2 to D3. Okay, and Pepsi is just gonna maintain their price at P3. And they'll experience an increase in demand leading to also a, an increase in the quantity of demand at that particular price at P3. P3 has not changed. And we'll label that point, oop, we'll label that point D. And that will help us with our analysis. Okay. So when Coke raises price, we notice that Pepsi's demand also increases. So there is a positive causal relationship here that they move in the same direction. Price goes up for Coke, demand increases for uh, Pepsi. So let's go ahead and analyze this graph. And then we're going to also analyze what would happen if Coke were to lower price. So first, let's begin with our first paper one analysis. As can be seen, we have two graphs, graphs A and graph B. Graph A is the market for Coke, and graph B is the market for Pepsi. On the x-axis, we're measuring quantity being demanded for both products, Coke and Pepsi. And on the y-axis, we're measuring price. We have three downward sloping demand curves, labeled D1, D2, D3, all sloping downward according to the law of demand. And we will focus now on graph A, the market for Coke. We will assume that Coke is the market leader and they will establish price at P1. And at a particular price of P1, the quantity of demand will be at Q1. In the graph for Pepsi, we have a downward sloping demand curve D2 and Pepsi will match Coke's price. So P3 will be similarly priced at, uh, as P1. And at a price of P3, the quantity of demand is at Q3 for Pepsi. Coke decides to raise price from P1 to P2. In accordance to the law of demand, the quantity demanded will decrease from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. Pepsi will respond to Coke's increase in price by maintaining price at P3 so that they become the cheaper substitute. As Coke loses the, a quantity of demand for their product from Q1, Q1 to Q2, those consumers will begin to switch over to the substitute good of Pepsi, leading to an increase in the demand curve from D2 to D3, resulting in an increase in the quantity of demand along D3 to Q4. As a result, we can see that a non-price determinant has impacted Pepsi's demand curve. As a result of Coke raising price, the demand for Pepsi has increased from D2 to D3, although Pepsi has not changed their price. Okay, so that's an example of explaining how a substitute could can impact the demand for, um, in this case, Pepsi. Coke raises price and Pepsi's demand increases, right? So they move in the same direction. Coke raises price and the demand for Pepsi increases. So that's one way to graph it. Now let's illustrate another way to graph this. Let's, what would happen if Coke were to lower their price? Okay, so let's start getting our graph ready to illustrate that outcome. Okay, just give me one moment. We're going to illustrate that particular outcome. Okay, and here we'll get rid of this so we can go back to our original starting point. Okay, so just about there. So here we're gonna have Coke establishing price at P1 with quantity at Q1 and Pepsi matching that price 
We're on P3 with a quantity man at Q3. And now we're going to have price uh, be lowered by Coke. So Coke's going to lower their price from P1 to P2. So in this case, we have price falling from P1 to P2. And as a result, the quantity demanded will increase in accordance to the law of demand from Q1 to whoop, Q2. So that's a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. All right, a movement along the demand curve as a result of a change in price. Now, Coke is lowering their price. So they are becoming the cheaper substitute. We're going to assume that Pepsi is going to maintain price at P3. So what's going to happen to Pepsi's demand curve? It's going to decrease because people who consume Pepsi will switch to Coke since Coke is now the cheaper substitute. So Pepsi's demand curve is going to decrease from D1 to, or from D2 to D3. And at a price of P3, we notice that the quantity of demand at that price of P3 along their new demand curve at D3 is decreased from Q3 to Q4. So there is a decrease, a decrease in demand. All right, so we see that with substitutes, price of one product uh, moves in the same direction as the demand of the substitute product. If Coke raises price, demand for Pepsi increases. If Coke lowers price, demand for Pepsi decreases. So let's also analyze this outcome. As can be seen, we have two graphs, graph A and graph B. Graph A is the market for Coke, graph B is the market for Pepsi. We're measuring quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. We have three downward sloping demand curves, D1, D2, D3, in accordance to the law of demand. And in graph A for the market for Coke, we notice that Coke, we will assume, is the market leader, and they will establish price at P P1. And at P1, the quantity of demand is at Q1 at point A. And Pepsi will price their product similar to that of Coke at P3. And, and along their demand curve of D2, the quantity of demand is at Q3 at point C. Coke decides to lower price from P1 to P2. That will lead to an increase in the quantity demanded from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. And as a result of Coke lowering price, they become the cheaper substitute. They will gain market share as a result of Pepsi consumers switching over to Coke because it is the cheaper substitute. So as that begins to happen, the demand for Pepsi begins to decrease from D2 to D3. Price is uh, stable at P3, and along their D, uh, at, uh, on their D3 curve, the quantity demanded is at Q4, which is uh, moving from point C to point D. All right, so that's a, uh, an analysis of those two outcomes, and we see in both cases that the price of one substitute good, a change in that price leads to um, the demand for the substitute good moving in the same direction. And that's it. Thank you so much.